Today we're going to look at some physics problems involving energy, work, and power. And here's a good example. Um, it says here, a block of 20 kilograms is pushed against a horizontal spring of spring constant K equals 1,200 newtons per meter, compressing the spring 50 centimeters. After being released, the block slides 5 meters over a horizontal surface. Looks like it has a mu, a, spring con a coefficient of friction of 0.1. And then it reaches a frictionless incline of 30 degrees. How far up the incline will the block slide? So let's draw a picture of this to see what it looks like. Uh, we have a horizontal surface. Surface has a coefficient of friction, mu equals 0.1. Uh, the block is being pushed up against the spring, compressing the spring. Here's our block. Let's say that the mass is equal to 20 kilograms and the uh, spring constant K is equal to 1200 newtons per meter. The block has been uh, pushed into the spring, compressed the spring a distance x equal to 0 0.50 meters. 50 centimeters is a half a meter. The block, after we release the block, and the, block, the, push, the spring then pushes the block over the surface, it will travel a distance d of 5 meters. before reaching the incline. And the incline, according to the problem, is frictionless. The angle theta is equal to 30 degrees. And the block will slide up the incline a ways before it comes to a complete stop, reaching a height h above the horizontal surface. Now, that means that the block has slid a distance d of the incline. And that is what we're looking for. We're looking for the distance the block slides up the incline. Assuming, of course, that the block doesn't lose all of its energy overcoming the friction uh, as it slides over the horizontal surface. If the block doesn't make the incline, and we assume it does, we'll probably end up with a negative answer indicating it never made it to the incline. So let's see what happens. The equation we're going to use is our trustworthy equation that says work plus initial potential energy plus initial kinetic energy at the beginning of the problem equals final potential energy plus final kinetic energy plus any heat lost in the process. Just like many other problems involving energy and work, uh, this is a really good equation to use. Now we're going to identify which of these terms we have um, some values for. Let's see here. Do we put any work into the system? Well, in a way, it looks like we do because it says that we're pushing a block against a spring. Now, either we account for that energy here in the amount of work we do or in the amount of energy was stored in the spring by pushing the block against the spring. So I elect to not calculate that, but simply say after the block is pushed against the spring, we have a potential energy of 1 half kx squared. That's the energy stored in the spring. The moment we release the block and the spring begins to push the block out, there's no motion at that moment, so there's no kinetic energy. At the very end, assuming the block makes it past the rough surface and up the incline, it will reach the height h, and so it will have potential energy equal to mgh. Once the block reaches this point, there's no motion in the block, so we assume therefore no kinetic energy, so that's zero, and since there is a rough surface, there's energy lost by overcoming the friction force there, and so that is equal to the friction force times the distance. And now I shouldn't use small d because I indicated big D for that distance, so friction force times big D. Now, what is that friction force? Well, it turns out that uh, the block has weight, which pushes the block against the surface, and then there's a normal force, Newton's third law, says that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, the normal force which is equal to the action, the weight mg, and by definition the friction force will be directed in the opposite direction of the motion of the block, and by definition it's equal to the normal force times mu, and since the normal force is mg, the friction force is mg mu. We can plug that now into our equation, we can therefore say that one half kx squared the energy stored in the spring is equal to the final potential energy, mgh, plus mg mu times d, which is the energy lost by overcoming that friction. Now, we're not looking for h, we're looking for 
the distance of the incline, so we have to relate those two quantities to one another. Imagine this to be the triangle. This is the opposite side to the angle, and this is the hypotenuse. By definition, the opposite side of the angle, H, is equal to the hypotenuse, D, times the sine of theta. That's, of course, the, the uh, trigonometric function we use to find the side opposite to the angle. It becomes, therefore, the sine of theta. When we plug that in here for H, the equation now becomes 1 half kx squared equals mg. Instead of H, we write d sine theta. Oop, I already want to write the 30 degrees, but let's just write theta plus mg mu d. And finally, we want to solve this equation for this distance right here, assuming we make it up the incline. And so we're going to move this term over to the left side and then divide both sides by the coefficients of d, which is mg sine theta. So let's first move mg mu d over. We have 1 half kx squared minus mg mu big D equals what we have left on the right side, mg small d sine theta. And then we're going to divide both sides by mg sine theta, leaving d by itself on one side. So we put this whole thing over mg sine theta. So we have 1 half kx squared minus mg mu big D divided by mg sine theta. And that equals small d, which is what we're looking for. All right, now let's plug in all the units and all the numbers. So we have 1 half k. k is 1,200 newtons per meter. x is 0.5 meters, so that's 0.5 meters squared, minus uh, m, which is 20 kilograms, g, 9.8 meters per second squared, mu is 0.1, no units, and d is 5 meters. And the whole thing divided by m, which is 20 kilograms, times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we have sine of theta, or sine of 30 degrees. And that equals d. Now, units-wise, notice we have newtons per meter. Now, newtons is kilograms meters per second squared. Since that's kilograms meters per second squared here, and kilograms meters per second squared there, that all cancels out. We have meters squared divided by meter. That becomes meter. We have meters here. So distance will indeed be in meters. Now we need to find the numbers. And let's see here, I have a calculator in my back pocket. Never be too far away from your calculator when you do physics problems. So we have 1,200 times 0.5 times 0.5 squared. That's 150. So this becomes 150 meters minus, so we have 20 times 9.8 times 0.1 times 5 equals 98 meters, all divided by 20 times 9.8 times 0.5, because the sine of 30 is 0.5, which is 98. So that's equal to D. So finally we can say D is equal to 150 minus 98 divided by 98. And we get 0 0.53 meters. So in this case, since the coefficient of kinetic friction is not too great, the block makes it all the way across the rough surface and has enough speed to make it up the incline a distance of 0 0.53 meters. And that is how you do this problem. And notice, again, using this equation right here, makes these types of problems really, well, I shouldn't say easy to do, but at least a lot more straightforward to do. All right, give it a try. See if that makes sense. And I'll come up with a few more examples to show you.